Happy Monday morning, everybody. Here we are starting our week off right in God's Word and prayer together um, in a beautiful setting. Maybe you have had a chance to come on out and and uh, explore the grounds of the Plumber Building, whether it's for uh, just a, a day around checking out Rochester sites or um, for a function or something, but this is just a beautiful area. And I bet when it was first built and uh, everything was put into place and all the construction work was done, this was incredibly peaceful up here. Right now, as I'm looking out this side, that's kind of the Apache Mall area, so we have traffic noises. Uh, we have Mayo not too far behind me here, which means Mayo 1 flies over every once in a while. Um, lots of people run around the grounds, um, a little quiet today, so there's a little extra noise with that. And I'm a little different than back when this was first built, and it was probably super peaceful up here, just beautiful and serene, and felt like a little um, getaway from everything as you walk around the grounds of different terraces and stuff. Um, probably a lot of work to keep up, but I'm sure they had people for that. And just amazing. Um, a very restful place. Um, that's something we don't always have these days, being restful and a place to just relax. And these these places that are kind of serene and, and kind of hit on off are, are really helpful for us to, to step away and just rest. And, and today that's what we're gonna be talking about is rest. And, and we're gonna look at um, Genesis chapter, the end of chapter one, beginning of chapter two, just a few verses in there. And we think about what rest means and how God gave us rest and what a glorious thing that is. And I hope you take it. Um, and I hope you take it the way it was given. So looking at Genesis, uh, kind of very end of chapter one and the beginning of chapter two, very end of chapter one, we have God saw all that he had made and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Six days over and then we start chapter two um, as the people that put numbers in the Bible broke it up. Creation, six days done. Then thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array period. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And there we can say, you know, he's done. So what do you do next? You, you rest. He, he completed his work and it was important. And then God blessed the seventh day um, and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Now, it naturally flows from the creation and the completion of work to rest. Um, but I hope you notice that there in verse 3, then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Did he make it holy because he finished his work? Um, or did he make it holy? Well, why did he make it holy? He made it holy. He made it set apart because on it he rested. That's what made the seventh day holy. It was a special day because God was resting on it. And as we go into the Ten Commandments in Exodus, we hear that um, God commands us to rest. He says, you need to rest. You need to understand the holiness of this day because I, did, I created something special on that day. And that something special was rest. And that's for you, and that's for me, and that's a huge gift. And so um, here we are and in, in, in this, this order of creation, a lot of times we kind of take it as um, we've got to finish everything we got to do and then we get to have rest. It's like a carrot at the end of a stick. But um, while God did finish everything he had to do, and, and uh, remember he's perfect and he is able to finish all the things, whereas um, life before us is going to be a whole lot of work for a whole lot of time. If we have to wait till everything we need to get done is done before we can rest, we're going to be in trouble. So God showed us a pattern. Six days that are there for work, but the seventh was rest. And it's holy and special and wonderful just because it's rest, even if all of your work is not done. Now, is that the way you approach rest? Do you take it when you need it? Do you take it because that's important for your body? Some of us are really good at that. 
And some of us are definitely not so good at that. And that's just the way um, we kind of work. And sometimes it's a big, big struggle. But here is God's command that we are to rest. And he makes a special day for us to rest. And, and that's what the, the Jewish uh, people would do. They would take that full day to rest uh, when they were following what God had commanded them. Otherwise, like us, they would struggle with holding that day of rest because they wanted to get ahead or they had more to do or they just were forgetting. And maybe they used that day of rest to actually worship other gods. And don't we do that too? There are other gods in our lives that we fill up that time of rest with, not rest, but worship in the wrong direction or struggling on with the labor of life. Now, rest, um, I think some of us would say, gosh, I can't take a full day. Are you kidding me? And um, so then we don't do it at all. But what does rest look like for you? What is most restful? I wonder if we all challenged ourselves. Um, maybe that full day is almost impossible for us. But I wonder if we challenged ourselves to work toward longer seasons of rest. I don't know if us in America, we could really make it that long. I think we're so full and so distracted and so many tasks and little things to do that uh, to, to rest for a full day might seem pretty much impossible. But I wonder if we could get there. Um, and can you imagine if you actually took a full day of rest, how anxious and excited you'd be to get back to the work that God had placed before you? It would be um, a whole new outlook, <laughs> for sure. But oftentimes our rest is, we're going to rest by doing a million things that's just not at our job job, but it's chasing around, delivering people, and, and filling it with activity. And I've heard so many people get to the end, like, I wish I could take a day off, or I wish maybe someday I'll be able to just take a vacation, or just take a nap or when someone else takes a nap well that must be nice to take a nap and and we almost shame the rest of others and shame ourselves when we take that rest that god has commanded us to do that god created for us to have now i will admit i am not good at rest and i'm not going to sit here and try to tell you that I've got to figure it out and just do this, but I can maybe challenge you and say, I'll join you on that challenge. So maybe start off by just encouraging other people's rest and not to, not to look down on them or, or feels, feel um, grumpy that they got to have it when you didn't, because in the end, it's our choice. It's one of those many choices we talk about in devotion where sometimes it's hard and sometimes we're not used to making that choice, but it's our choice to rest. Whether it's a 20 minute quick cat nap on the couch, just rest our body because we need it so bad, or we're actually taking time to sit down and read scripture, close our eyes and pray to the Lord, take a walk in his creation and give glory to the creator. There's so many things to just take that Sabbath rest. But sit back today and take a few minutes and think about what do you call rest and is it restful to you? These days, so much of our rest is not very restful. We feel tired after it. That vacation packed so full of things that we really didn't get to take a breath and we come back exhausted into our work week. So think about your rest. How is it going for you? Are you resting or are you just calling work rest? And what can you do to take one little thing and actually rest? And what does that mean for you? After church today, I sat back on the couch with my cup of coffee, which is just a weird thing that I do. And um, pretty soon a cat jumped on my lap because we have a couple cats at our house. And I'll tell you what, boom. Eyes were closed. I got some rest and it was wonderful. I don't feel guilty about that. Each day I get to go and do a devotion. You could say, gosh, that devotion has probably worked for you, Harvey. And it is some work, but you know what? To do a devotion, you have to get in God's word. 
Gosh, that's restful. At least for me. I get to go to places like the Plumber House and sit in this beautiful creation and soak it in a little bit before and after I, after I do this devotion. That's pretty awesome rest also. There's lots of places that I do rest and feel rested. What about you? What are those places that you do rest and feel rested? Is it taking a nap? Awesome. Is it um, taking a walk? Great. Is it reading God's word? Great. Prayer? Fantastic. Um, and of course, there's always a caveat. There's a good and bad side of rest because sometimes we can rest when everybody around us needs help. And so we have to balance the help and the rest. Sometimes that means you got to forego your rest to help your spouse or your kids out. And sometimes the ch more challenging thing I think for us is to say to your spouse, your children, no, we're going to not do that and you're going to rest. That's challenging, especially these days, which is funny because God creates this awesome thing of rest and how cool he must have. All right, I'm putting, I'm personifying God. God is way beyond us. But God, I can imagine going, this is a great gift. I'm giving this wonderful gift to my children, to the creation, that rest is going to happen. Humans are going to rest. Animals are going to rest. Plants are going to rest. Just think of this. All summer long, these these deciduous trees are producing leaves and fruit and pollen and all this type of stuff. And pretty soon they're going to drop their leaves and rest. Everything has a rhythm of rest. Some things seem more forced than others. We have such a good choice, free will. And what do we do? Often we don't rest. So how are you doing? How are you hitting that line of helping people and serving the Lord, but also stopping to take the Sabbath rest. Start with a few minutes. If you're one of those people that's go, 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 go. Start with a few minutes in a way that works for you and take that rest and see if you can build it up. If you can get to a full day, holy cow, maybe that'll be a challenge for me to see if I can get to a full day once a year maybe. That's what it feels like. But if you can't have a full day, grab a full minute, maybe a full five minutes, work yourself up to an hour. <laughs> Can you do that to find that rest? And in that rest, commune with the Lord who created rest on the seventh day and blessed it and made it holy and realize you're part of that. Can you hear that? The world is not resting right now. And we are competing with it constantly, the noise and the clutter of our life. This week, I hope you can overcome that clutter and noise and be blessed by rest. Take a step. I'll take a step too. I'm starting a new little procedure, new little planning system kind of thing that I'm going through to see if I can be better at this and pay attention to it more. And uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'm praying for you guys, and I pray it goes well for you as you receive this gift of rest created on the seventh day, and that you can honor that seventh day and that Sabbath that Jesus, that God the Creator, Jesus' his Son, and the Holy Spirit empowers us to do. So blessings on your restfulness, and uh, let's pray, which is another great way to rest. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, um, rest is way more difficult than it should be but it's difficult for all of us. There's so many things going on, so many callings and, and pulls on our time, and most of them are ones that we have created for ourselves. Lord, help us to make the choice, and these days, a harder choice than maybe it should be, to stop and rest. Lord, eventually maybe to stop and say no to a few things, just to say yes to time with you and the rest that you provide. As we grow and get better at this, Lord, I pray that you bless our activity, that you uh, show us that you're being patient with us, that we should be patient with each other, and that we can grow in our rest as we grow closer to you and realize that when we do stop and rest, we are more efficient, more equipped to do the work that you called us to do in a better, more rested way. Lord, thank you for this and help us to rest well in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ah, well...
blessings on your week. I pray that uh, it may be a blessing and a wonderful thing that you learn a few things about rest and you to find it and do it in a way that is helpful and that you can be consistent with. And understand this, that God loves you and God blesses you and cares for you even when you get busy again and you lose that restfulness. And all you have to do is not try to make it up, but, but just jump on and try it again. Start again when the time, um, when, you, when you're ready to just to claim that rest um, in the Lord. Have a blessed week and a restful week, and we'll see you next Monday.